Why do we take photographs today? The answer is simple. We take photos to keep the memory of places, things, and people alive and to hold a moment in history for future generations. Photography is an important part of our lives and is evident in modern day inventions like smartphones, tablets, and desktops. Now, memories are important, like the next creepy photographs I'm about to show you. Some of the people in these photos are dead and their families thought to take pictures with them to have an image to remember and mourn them with. These are called post-mortem photographs. Post-mortem photographs are images taken of people after death. This type of photograph was common in the 18th and 19th century. People were more willing to pay a few dollars for a post-mortem photo that memorialized a loved one's death than they were. Now, these type of photos were more important than wedding or birthday photographs. Victorian England had a unique relationship with death because Victorians died young, died quickly, and died of injuries and infections that modern medicine helped abolish. They invented elaborate grieving rituals to give meaning to their loved ones' ephemeral lives. All of this happened at the same time as advances in photography led to the prevalence of post-mortem photos where Victorians would carry out their dead, prop them up and stand them like you're looking at a picture, set them up like they were alive and take a picture worth a thousand words. These stands help corpses look alive and allow them to be posed with their still breathing family members. Now when you look at this picture, you can't even tell who's alive and who's dead, but it's still creepy. Now the reason was simple, death was omnipresent. There were outbreaks of highly communicable and deadly diseases and when scientific discoveries shattered conventional religious beliefs, many embraced photography as a means of counteracting death. If their lives were to be tenuous, the images at least could endure. Now what does it mean to remember? For some, remembrance means capturing an image, documenting not just life but after death. In the 19th century, photographers were often called upon to do post-mortem photography, capturing the stillness of the final moment. In some communities, capturing death took on a different meaning. Now, historians estimate that during the 1840s, the medium's first decade, as cholera swept through Britain and America, photographers recorded deaths and marriages by a ratio of 3 to 1. Now, Boarding practitioners had barely learned to handle the bulky machinery and explosive chemicals before they were asked to take likeness of the dead, bend lifeless limbs into natural poses, and mask telltale signs of sickness racing against rigor mortis. Now, you, if you have an idea of what happens after someone dies, there's rigor mortis, the muscles are tense, you know, you can't really just bend them in shape. But here, there are professionals back in the day who were able to do this. Is they can manipulate, they can, you know, pose the dead like as if they were alive. Some were sitting down, some can stand, some can pose in different directions. And they take these photos and you would think it's real but it takes a special skill to do something like this. Now, many people find photos of the dead creepy or morbid. I do not. No question, post-mortem photographs are soulful images. They capture the ravages of illness, the big grieving parents. They show wives caressing the faces of lost husbands just for a chance to be tender towards them one last time. And they portray unbearable, beautiful children poised as if asleep, surrounded by toys they played with while alive. But today, the sorrow of these images lies elsewhere in treating pictures of the dead like obscenities rather than a memento mori. What does that mean? Uh, anyway. During the 1840s and early 1850s, a post-mortem photo would likely have been the first and only portrait of someone. Now, back then, it was around $2, and not everyone could afford $2 in the 18th and 19th century, so there were only a few, you know, kind of people that could afford it. And if you look at the amount today, $2 was roughly about $60 to $70 today, so photographs were costly. And in America's open expanses, studios were miles away from most households, but that changes things. 
People who had never given a thought to this type of photo turned into uh, desperation. Now, decades later, veteran practitioners wrote of how parents would arrive at their doorsteps with stillborn infants to whom they hadn't even given a name. They would just come up and say, can you photograph this? Now, many post-mortem pictures show parents cradling their children or wives alongside their deceased husbands. The corpse figures prominently, but so do the shattered expressions of those left behind. I have never seen a post-mortem photo where everyone was cheering up or happy, except for the guys who were sitting down think they were having a drink or something next to the car. But most times you can see the pain, you can see the anger, you can see the sadness, you can see the disappointment in their faces. It's like this photograph is the only thing they have to hold on to, um, you know, even if they just spent a day or two with their loved one. Now, a surprising number of fathers appear at this time, men could only admit their grief. There are parents so young they look like children themselves, because back then people married so young. Now, many subjects make trembling attempts at self composure. Post modern photographs are piercingly intimate. They bring the viewer close enough to the face of the dead to see a boy's long lashes or a girl's spraying of freckles. Now, these photographers, they did a lot of props. They could basically make do some makeup, touch up, do some brushing, add freckles, you know, prop up the dead like they were living, you know. Many were taken at home, so they would come to the person's house or the people would bring the body to the photographer's house because the equipment was so large back then. It wasn't just like this smartphones we carry around. It was a very big camera and it had to be set up and they had to wait for the sun sometimes. So now when you look at the props, you can imagine that this were the chairs they used to sit in and this were the toys they used to play with. It is in this post-mortem photos especially that we discover what the French critique Roland Barthes called puncture of a photograph. It means the accidental element that wounds a viewer with its poignancy. Many post-mortem photographs are hard to look at. I mean, especially like this one. There are too graphic and too desperate in their attempts to simulate life, but others provide an almost visceral connection to the past. I have seen many of these. I'll tell you a short story. Many years ago when I was trying to buy a house, and I came into this house and they were like all those 18th century photographs all over the place. It was creepy. And because I already have a knowledge of these post-mortem photos, I kept looking at them individually wondering which of this photo is a post-mortem photo? How can I tell who's alive in here and who's not? That, that was how I felt back then. And because of that, I turned down the house because it was situated near a cemetery. But that's a story for another day. But you get the point, a post-mortem photograph, a creepy photograph, 18th century family photograph, and then next to the cemetery. Uh, I don't want to be there. <laughs> anyway, that's it for today's story. Thank you so much for watching. This is Stories with Oluchi. I tell dark, strange, and mysterious stories in Nigeria and beyond. Please subscribe to my channel and like as well. Thank you again for watching and have yourself a good day.